Okay, now you can see the burner assemblies and everything is right here. And this is the forge itself. It's fairly small inside, it's four and a half by about a little under nine. I used bricks like this. These are inch and a quarter by four and a half by nine. Uh, not sure if these were really the best ones to use or not. So uh, I'm reserving judgment. So far they've worked pretty good. This thing is about 18 inches long. That's two bricks put end to end. Uh, or four bricks put the other way. Uh, the reason it's this size is because one brick will go from one end to the other uh, this way without any breaks and I want to just use one brick uh, and I want to stick with bricks. I could have used a wet pack, I could have used kale wool boards, but they're not as tough as this brick. This brick uh, you know, I mean, it's not especially tough, but I could beat it around a little bit, and if I put like a wet pack in there, I can't. It's just, it's just going to fall apart. If I hit it with anything, it's going to knock it up around. So I used brick on it. Uh, whether I should have used the two and a quarter inch brick or the inch and a quarter, uh, time will tell. But I have run it this way for a while, and it's been pretty good. This thing can be actually expand it and there's a couple of ways to expand it and I'll probably go through this later on when I'm uh, when I've used this for a while if I wanted to put two furnaces in here I could put one right next to it on the other end and lengthen this thing out to about three feet if I wanted to I guess if I wanted to make swords or something I could do that uh, probably not going to do that but all I've done here is just take this brick and fit it in and I've tack welded just a sort of junk. This is made out of whatever I had laying around the shop except for the, uh, the bricks themselves. I had to buy those, they're about uh, two bucks a piece. But uh, I went ahead and tacked this together. Uh, a lot of stuff I do, I never do anything but tack it together. Uh, unless it's going to have some heavy use because I always seem to change something. So I may make some changes in this uh, in the future. One feature that worked out pretty good on this is this right here. Now, the reason this slide is set up this way is uh, obviously so I can open it and have access. I leave enough space here for the hot gases to come out, but I want this brick to get hot. I want it to reflect heat back in to the rest of the of the uh, forge. That's one thing about these forges that is really important is you have to have reflective heat. Now if you're using something like a wet pack, it'll heat up in 30 seconds and boy it really, really reflects heat back up in a very short time. This stuff is about five minutes, so it's a little longer. And to be really good, it's going to be longer yet. This is the way I've set this up. i got another slide on the other end if I want to use it. And so I could do it both ways. I could actually have stuff sticking out the other side. But I wanted some metal pieces here. And of course, I have to hold the bricks together. I, don't, I didn't want to knock the brick around too much. So I, I put steel plate around these edges. I'm going to fire this off. And you can see, you've probably already seen if you've seen my, some of my other videos. But I'm going to show you where the burners, the in-shot burners, are on this thing and how they work out. Now we're going to be firing off here in just a sec. Okay, you got all four burners coming on and they're going to start warming this thing up. Here you can see the holes I cut in the brick. There's two bricks there. I've cut the four holes in it to line up with the burners. And you can see them starting to glow. They're glowing partly because of the heat coming off the back. You can see the heat is turning the back 
bricks to uh, bright red, almost almost yellow. Uh, it'll get hotter yet. It's been in six, seven minutes. It's been going. So, uh, and it'll get hotter yet. But that's how it's set up. I'm going to show you how those, uh, how I cut those holes. I guess it's nothing big, but it's fairly simple. But I'll kind of give you an idea how I did it. To get the holes in the right places on the bricks, I used a piece of styrofoam. This piece of styrofoam is the same size as the brick, and it fits over like that. And I just use that as a pattern on the brick. Uh, what you can do is you take an old piece of foam like this and just and it'll make dents. I don't know how well you can see the dents there, but it'll make them. And then you can just uh, take a hole saw and cut it out. And I'll show you what I use to cut the brick. Okay, you can see it's just a plain hole saw with a carbide uh, pilot. Uh, it is uh, diamond edged. They've just uh, edged this with uh, uh, diamond chips. And uh, it's about $30 for that thing. You can get them tungsten carbide also kind of works but this one worked pretty slick and i'll show you how i actually drilled those things in the brick because it's not especially easy okay here we are trying to get these cut with a hole saw this would be better done on a on a drill press but my drill press is broken right now i wanted to get this done so i've got this under water To lubricate the cut. We'll see if I get lucky enough to get this through. These books are not very strong. Okay, I managed to get that one pretty good. Now all I've done, this is just on a block, and I've set my pattern uh, on it and just started drilling it. You have to drill both sides, but uh, that's kind of how it comes out. Hopefully I'll get the other wheel, the one done. I've got one already finished. Here's one right here. And uh, it's done and ready to go in. And hopefully I'll get lucky and get this one finished. So you can see how I did that. That's it on this one.